This conference will now be recorded. Hi all, all, welcome to the next session on SAP workflow. In the last class, we have discussed about what exactly the workflow, and also <laughs> we have seen the architecture of the workflow. We have different levels, uh, ABAP programs and business objects and process level and organization level. And in the ABAP program level, we are going to raise the events by using function module, by using function module SWE underscore event underscore create. So whenever you raise the event, <coughs> there is an event <coughs> configuration, linkage configuration, which we can done in the workflow level <coughs> by using the button or else the direct transaction is the SWE2 and SWE YTYPV. And then whatever the workflow which is assigned to this business object and event, whenever you rise with the function module, that workflow will be triggered or started. So whenever the workflow started inside, if there is any step, that steps will be executed. So that's the process we have seen in the last class. But it's a high dose, high level dose for you. Just I would like to show some glimpse of the what exactly the workflow I have given the yesterday class. But today we are going to talk about what exactly the workflow programming, how we can do the workflow program. We have seen already we are we have given the in-depth knowledge on the business objects, what exactly the business object business object type and key field and attributes methods and events and also we have seen how to enhance the standard business object and also how to find out the standard business objects for your applications and today so I am going to talk about the uh, purely workflow programming and process level what exactly the task and already yesterday we have seen the task it is an activity which is going to be performed by person or in a system and if you want to create a task we have pftc is the transaction code and in the pftc we have so single step uh, task and multi-step task and if it is a single step task there is only single activity which we are going to perform if it is a multi-step task there will be a multi steps which we are going to perform and so in the single step task we have different kind of tasks one is a standard task and another one is a customer task so whenever the task is created a eight digit number a eight digit number will be generated that number will be based on the prefix numbers SWU3 transaction whatever the number you generate based on that number the number will follow the sequence and standard task and customer task standard task starts with the TS and it is a client independent task and which will be having no validity period but if it is a customer task it starts with the T and it is a client dependent task. So whenever you create this task in one client, this task will be available in that client only, but it doesn't available in another clients. That's a customer task. And also we have seen a different kind of methods as well um, and different kind of task. And to create a name, uh, steps to create a workflow, these are all the steps. So you need to follow these steps case. Maybe I will park this and I will, I will come up again with this but so today I'm going to talk about total workflow programming okay what exactly the workflow what we can do with the workflow that's what we are going to see in today's class workflow programming because this is very important and see guys so in the workflow programming so you can do a lot of things guys so you can do suppose I have, I'm going to take a program simple so if i want to store some values what you need to have what you need to have if you want to store some values what you need to have so definitely we need to have any data objects in the program right so maybe the data objects can be in a, a variable and that can be in a work area that can be in a internal table but in workflow if you want to store so we have the uh, object called container elements case container elements okay so what exactly container first let me talk about container so here we are going to call container container is used to store the data in workflow so in workflow that 
data object which is data object we will store the where is the container guys it provides memory persistent memory guys it provides persistent memory you know what is persistent class right so it provides an storage area for your object orientation the same concept container provides an a memory area for your workflows so and memory and it is used to store the data in the workflow guys so the elements we are going to call is container elements with the container elements with the container elements sorry the container elements we have to define the data objects With the container elements only we need to define the data objects guys and here i am talking about container so there are types of containers we have types of container in workflow one is the first one is the the data will be passed from the abap programs that container we are going to call it's an event container the second one is the workflow container and the third one is the task container so there are different memory areas and the fourth one is the method container and fifth one is the a rule container okay very very important this is so let's example so here i am going to talk about uh, some of the uh, fundamentals in abap i have an image okay? and i'm i am calling a class or i am calling in a uh, one include program in include program i am calling a class in class i am calling in a method in method i am calling in a function module so this is my hierarchy guys this is my hierarchy this is my hierarchy okay so you know the concept of local data objects and global data objects suppose if i declare a declaration in method that data object will be available in the method only i cannot access in the main program and suppose i have in a main program i have some data objects and some things can be i can access from include but maybe i cannot access from the class so and if it is in a local class i can access it but if it is in a global class i cannot access it like this i have in a different memory areas right i have in a different memory areas and also there is in a different memory allocations global memory allocation and local memory allocation in the same way we have the event container workflow container task container method container and rule container guys so how the hierarchy will be so i have an abap program so abap program so in the abap program i use swe event underscore create so whenever i call this function module i am going to pass the business object vivo and also i am going to provide an event maybe if you practice extra day you will get to know this okay event and also we are going to pass key right so whenever i raise this function module a memory allocation will be available guys what i am doing here i am raising an event i am raising an event so here a event container will be created this is the event container this is the event container guys so one memory allocation will be available here i can have an event object 
the event container you can see right yesterday i did event object i have used this is my event object one object will be generated so this is a business object business object is an instantiation of the business object type so whenever you raise the event okay a object will be created then what i am going to do so whenever you raise an event based on the event linkage okay based on the event linkage where is rakesh huh? so is he part of yesterday's celebration no okay so this is the next one is the a workflow so whenever you raise the event a workflow will be triggered right so based on the event linkage maybe so this triggers an a workflow how this will be triggered so there is an a configuration okay sw e2 is the configuration so or i can say it's an a event linkage so based on the linkage it finds out the system finds the corresponding workflow and it starts the workflow engine right so we have seen yesterday so the, i did an event linkage and that configuration is placed in the sw e2 so whenever the event is raised the workflow will be triggered guys so this is this is the very, very important guys if you understand this concept workflow is very very easy but if you don't understand it is very very difficult so this is my start point so whenever the workflow started a memory allocation will be done in the workflow container okay there is an a memory allocation which will happen in the workflow container guys okay but in the workflow i am going to call different steps that means i can have different tasks okay so in the workflow maybe i have different tasks so i have one task task one maybe control c i can create a sales order i can create an invoice i can create a customer i have a different task this is my uh, hierarchy this is my task one this is my task to assume there is a multi step task in the workflow guys this is the task two okay so i have uh, different tasks so one task is here and uh, uh, another task another task is here and i have one more task is here so i have three tasks from one workflow i have task 1 task 2 and task 3 so whenever this task is executed whenever this task is executed the container which will be created is the task container this is my task container okay in the task what we did in the yesterday in the task what we did in the task what we did huh? we have assigned business object and method so whenever the task is executed we'll see again guys no don't worry on that so just i have given to understand this concept just i did the workflow yesterday okay because i need to give some theory if i give directly this theory you will go for mad so that's why i have given simple workflow and this is my method container so method will be executed so here i have an a method container so the memory what is the container container provides it's in a persistent memory it is used used to store the data in the workflow level guys 
with the container elements we have to define the data objects there are types of container so whenever you raise the event a event container will be allocated whenever you start the workflow a workflow container will be allocated the memory allocated to the workflow container whenever the task is executed the task container will be the memory is allocated to the task container and whenever the task is executed inside we are having a method the method business object will be executed that time the method container will be allocated guys this is the memory allocations in the workflow this is the memory allocations in the workflow guys but how you are transferring the data from one container to the another container how you transfer the data i want both sides arrow so i want both sides so how you are going to allocate the data from event container to the workflow container how you will do it so this concept exactly we call it in a binding concept guys so binding transfer the data from one container to the another container that's what exactly the binding so the binding provides definitely there is a question on the binding as well so binding provides huh, with binding with binding we can transfer or map the data from one container anything one container to another container guys that's it that's an a binding concept so we are going to transfer the data or map the data from one container to another container see event container to workflow container and workflow container to the oh sorry this is the architecture workflow container to the task container and task task container to the method container and vice versa guys both the sites so both the sites we are going to transfer it so here binding provides we are going to transfer the data from event container to the workflow and maybe workflow to the event from workflow to the task and task to the workflow again back so like this maybe i have an a i have an a include program by using class method i have an importing parameters so i can transfer the values from include programs to the method and method executes it gives the values back to my include program in the same way i have an a workflow i am calling the task task takes some values from the workflow and it executes and it task executes the method and method inside the method i am transfer some values let's say can get items get items i transfer uh, sales order number i will return back the items the items will comes to the task and the task transfer the items to the workflow level guys so this is the data transfer data map a root map for the data guys because <laughs> if you want to process anything we need to have an a data so what is sap meant for what it's an a systems applications and products in data processing guys so the concept every concept deals with the data processing only so here the engine the workflow engine what is the fuel here for the workflow engine what is the fuel what is the fuel for the workflow engine so data is the fuel guys without data you cannot run your workflow so that's why so we need to send the data from one container to the another container so fuel is important data is important if you want to transfer the data we need to use the container and with the binding concept we are going to transfer the data from one container to the another container that's the purpose of the containers so if it is an event if when you raise an event a event container will be allocated when you start the workflow engine a workflow container will be available when you trigger the task the task container will be available when you execute the method the method container will be available that's an a memory allocation container is an a memory allocation but the the parameter the container elements are the data objects guys so this is about container and binding concept now i am going to start the basics in the workflow programming by using our favorite arithmetic operations in the workflow step by step we will learn first i start with the arithmetic operation then you will understand clearly guys so this is the required theory for the uh, workflow programming and now i am going to um, do the 
uh, workflow programming here. Very, very important class. Okay, so first I'm going to start. Actually, yesterday we have seen, yeah, one more topic I need to cover. So here I talked about only the uh, single step task case. What exactly the multi step task we'll see today? Control B. And after this, maybe, yeah. So here I'm going to include the multi step task. Okay, first I'll talk about multi step, then I will go to the um, workflow programming so multi step task so you know right what exactly the multi step so simple that definition is we can have multi multiple activities or tasks or tasks in this task we can have multiple tasks, multiple activities we can do with this task. And there are two types of tasks. One is here, the one is the workflow template. And the second one is workflow task. So these are the two types of, uh, here two types. In the single step also we have two types, guys. In the single step also we have two types. One is the standard task and another one is the customer task. In the multi-step also we have two types workflow template and workflow task same this is also in a it is a <coughs> client <coughs> independent task independent task and the prefix for this is ws and also and also it doesn't have any validity period so lifetime once you create this once you create this this task will be available lifetime guys okay so but this task is different control c and control and this is an a client dependent task case in the multi step task workflow task is the client dependent this is the prefix ws and this is the prefix i think wf task group okay okay this is an a uh, wf and it will have It will have validity period. So what's the what's your problem? So what is your something you are going to correct it? What is no? So this is the prefix, maybe yeah, prefix and prefix. Okay. So pref prefix is the like standard task, the prefix is T S. Customer task the prefix is T. The same way the multi-step task. So if it is in a workflow template, it's in a WS. It's a workflow task, it's in a WF case. Okay. So maybe we'll try to create one multi-step task case. Yesterday we have seen standard task, and today I am going to create a C. So TS standard task, customer task T, WS workflow template, workflow task, and also there is a task group as well. So the last one is the task group. Task group simple guys. We have in a type group, you know. You have in a type group in the data dictionary. So which is used to store all your data, uh, all your types declarations. Here also, this is the workflow repository, guys. That's it. Workflow repository to maintain the same kind of tasks all into single task group okay single task group so this is my task group 
and maybe TZ it is, it is TZ, that's it. It's an ATZ, is the prefix. So these are different type of task we have guys. So how many type of task we have? So we have the single step task. In single step, we have two types. One is a standard task and another one is a customer task. Okay, you can perform only single activity with this task. So this is the symbol. And the multi-step task, we have different types. And the two types are the workflow template and workflow task. And the uh, these two tasks belong into the uh, multi-step task. And the task group is different type and which is used to group them group them into the single task with a workflow repository. So these are the different type of tasks available in SAP. And you can see all types, standard task, customer task, workflow task, workflow template and task group. Okay, so today I'm going to do in a workflow template, which is in a multi-step task and okay. And this is my G workflow arithmetic operations, G workflow ART, and maybe I can put B6. And so this is a name, Arithmetic Operations Workflow. And maybe uh, do Arithmetic Operations. Okay. So think this is a main program, guys. My workflow, this is my workflow. And it's my main program. If you compare with program, it's my main program. So EDG6 save. Workflow transport PR. Yeah, this is mine and okay. Save. And guys, so if it is in a workflow uh, template, multi-step task, you see different tabs. Yes, basic data. And suppose if you want to give the description, you can give it guys like script editor. So I can give long description. I can provide here uh, with this uh, workflow. We can perform all arithmetic. I can write some long text and we have upper Yeah, so you can see there is a container uh, tab. So this container is the workflow container, guys. See, we are creating a workflow template. This container becomes a workflow container, guys. So that, that's exactly the workflow container. See, this is my workflow. My container is the workflow container. Here you can see the workflow container. If you want to see, this is my workflow container, guys. So what is workflow container? It provides a memory to your workflow, the memory allocation it, it is going to provide. And if you want to have your, your own data objects, what you need to do? If you want to have your own data objects, what you need to do? If you want to have your own data objects, what you need to do? If you want to have your own data objects, you need to have a container element space. So you need to create, see this is a symbol, create element, it's like create, Container element guys create container elements. So I'm going to create in a container elements. My element is maybe I will follow the same symbols. So GV underscore num one. Okay, so num one. This is my GV num one. Maybe description. It's a number one. 
but me i don't give anything so i don't want to put much on that descriptions and abap dictionary type is my integer guys int4 this is my integer and here there are some properties guys properties are so i can use this i can import this data and as well as i can pass this data to the another variable guys so you need to select import and export if it is in a workflow container yes i have created one number i have created one number and maybe i will create one more number and my number is zv underscore num2 and control v and control v and into four into four and properties maybe i can import i can export that's it and guys i have any one more container i would like to have any result gv underscore result so so here the result is the one more parameter control v and control v and so control v into four so save it save it guys so now i am ready with my data objects okay here i am ready with my container elements in the workflow container okay then in abap you know you have a num1 you have a num2 i need to get any result what i need to do what i need to do perfect i need to assign the values num1 equal to 5 num2 equal to 6 but in the workflow how do you assign the values guys so if you want to assign the values now i am going to perform multiple steps guys multiple steps if you want to perform multiple steps see guys there is a transaction workflow builder you need to select workflow builder guys so that this is the transaction even i can come from the pftc or i can directly comes to the screen guys so if you want to come to directly to the screen so the transaction is workflow builder so which is used for the multiple task guys multi step task multi step task definitely you have to use the workflow builder so what are the multi step tasks we have if you create in a workflow template or if it is in a workflow task definitely you have to come to the workflow builder the transaction code is swdd this is the transaction code this is the transaction code very very important guys see now so workflow flow chart guys so you have an a start and the end right same way whenever the workflow started workflow start and workflow end okay this is a event symbol this is a signal see same your network signals so this is the work whenever it starts this is the start and this is my and see guys this is the my activity <laughs> what activity i need to do guys <coughs> okay so if you want to create your activity this is my undefined block so you need to click on uh, right click guys click on the undefined block and right click and create and see guys when you created a task undefined block you are going to see lot of things we can do in the workflow guys so maybe i can take this uh, function front screen so whenever step 1 if if we and create create a step by right click on undefined block and step 2 select 
the right activity what activity you need to perform by choosing any one of below step types so interview question what are the step types we have so these are all the step types we have we have in the workflows we can perform these many operations so one i can do is the activity and another one i can use the i can send an email guys see whenever you withdraw amount immediately you will get an email so i can do with the workflow guys i can do with the workflow then user decision so you have applied in a leave request your manager has to approve so approve and reject buttons i can provide by using user decision i can do an approval process guys so user decision means definitely who will execute this task system or user user will execute guys that's an a foreground task so this kind of task you need to create an a like in a foreground task and with foreground method and next one is so suppose i need to check the condition if the customer is priority customer uh, if the customer is existing customer or new customer so how do you check it so in the program you check it with if but here the step is the condition type step guys so here different kind of things we can do and also i have any records in the internal table i need to loop it how can you do this here you can see there is a loop step so you can see there is a loop step guys so here we are going to talk about so most of the step types maybe what are all the possible the other steps i maybe I, I may not cover and and also here also there is an guys so in the program if you want to assign the value use the equal operator or you use the uh, uh, equal or move operation you can do it the assignments but if you want to assign the values here we are going to use the container operation guys so container operation i need to create to assign the values so so first step i am going to discuss is the container operation so what we can do with the container operation okay the first step i am using is the container operation so with this we can assign the values to the to the container elements and also we can perform arithmetic operations as well guys both the things we can do arithmetic operations also we can do it by using container operation so one step is the container operation see so with this we can assign the value and also we can do the <coughs> arithmetic operation so 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 where we are in now i have any two elements uh, maybe I, i will close this guys if you want to see the workflow container see guys there is a workflow container double click on the workflow container in this screen okay and uh, just come down see guys you see your container elements which are created are available in the workflow container level in the workflow container level you see these are all the workflow container elements i need to assign the value first the num1 i need to assign the values to the num2 then i need to do an arithmetic operation for the gv underscore result by combining by adi, uh, adding num1 plus num2 so my first step is <coughs> create container operation and with the container operation step name assign <coughs> num1 this is my step guys assign num1 and value this is my outcome guys value assign to the container element gv underscore num1 this is my step and the outcome of this step is and step should be in the workflow log you need to select so i need to see guys whenever you execute in a workflow a log will be generated okay so if you select this the step will not be available in the log if you want to have this step in the log deselect it guys deselect it okay maybe you will understand this later and my result element so what is the what is the my result element gv_num1 and which is equal to 
I can do it a C, guys. I can do it a equal. I can do it a not equal. This is equal to value. My value is how can I directly I can assign the value? Maybe my value is six, guys. I have assigned a six value. And okay, that's it, guys. One step is created. One step is created. So next, guys, I do not have a undefined block. If I want to create one more step, what I need to do? So here, place the see, guys, in the in this path, place a cursor and right click it and create. See, guys, I can create one more container operation. Next, my operation is assign num2. Okay, the outcome, the description is value assigned to container element value container element gv underscore num2 and i should have this step in my workflow log my result element is gv underscore num2 and the value is 9 maybe i'm giving 9 and save it see guys this is a multi-step task guys you are performing multi steps in this i am assigning a value to the num gv underscore num num1 and the my next step is i am assigning a value to the gv underscore num2 this is my one more step and my another step is i need to do any arithmetic operation addition is my arithmetic operation and so go and create a container and my next operation is do the addition do sum this is my operation and uh, addition okay after two numbers are okay two numbers are added into my container element c e and the value is gv underscore result guys this is my step See my result element is what is my result element now? GV underscore result and my expression equal to equal to GV underscore num1 and assignment I can do in a add and my another value is a GV underscore num2 guys. Okay, simple guys. What, what Rakesh Vendata? It's good. Yeah. So save it. See guys, I have any one step which is used to assign the value for the num1. And I have another step which is used to assign the value to the num2. And this is my step which is used to do the arithmetic operation sum, guys. And that's it. Huh? Yeah, that's very, very important. Yeah, okay. And save it. Check it. That's it. Done. So zero errors. See, guys, here you can see all the things. Okay, warnings there are information warning are no problem errors you need to correct it here also same and activate your workflow guys but in the previous thing i have told workflow should be triggered from the abap programs right i can directly test the workflows as well guys so see execute that's it here you will commit and maybe i can assign a value if you want maybe i am not assigning the values so i have already assigned the values in the workflow itself no need to pass the values guys and whenever you execute the workflow guys a workflow engine will be started see guys a work item number is generated 18.09.657 guys this is my workflow and maybe if you want to check my workflow log swi1 and uh, delete the time and execute and see guys so this is my do arithmetic operation is my workflow and click on the click on the work item click on the work item you see guys there are three steps which are done one is the this step assign the value and value is assigned to the container element this is the outcome guys here you can see this is outcome this is my step so i have given a, a outcome so this is done value assigned to the container element one value assigned to the container element two and two numbers are added but where do you see the values where do you see the values so i need to see the values will be available in the container container is the memory area you need to go to the container 
so this is my container symbol guys so go to the container you see value 6 and 9 my result is 15 guys my result is 15 so so what are the things you have observed here observation is very very important in the workflows so here here i have an a here there is a status case this cube indicates the status of the workflow so when it is in a full bloom uh, full blue color then it is in a completed status if it is in a full white color it is in an open status if it is in a half blue and half white it is in a in process status case so this is the different status of an a workflow and also you see the work item number the tracking number this is and and also guys this is in a persistent object so maybe this object will be uh, available for the years guys that's why little bit workflow that's why what we will do is we will not execute the workflows in the same application layer we have in a different application layer for the workflow all the workflows will be run in another workflow uh, another client actually it's an another client we are going to run these workflows why because the workflow engine the object is it's a persistent object it will be available permanently so when it is available permanently means for every workflow engine starts it stores it allocates some memory like this for years it will be very big memory so if i have the same workflows in the same client so it reduces the performance of my system so that's why we are going to run the workflows in another client the client is the SWU3 very important sorry uh, SWU3 perfect yes so even the automatic workflow customizing you can see that client so my client is different client case so go to here there is an RFC configure RFC destination and execute and see this is my RFC destination a local a another temporary client will be created created the client is the local workflow unread locally a another application server will be created so that's why we use this rfc destination so all your workflows will run in the another client the client is this case workflow underscore local underscore 800 this is the entry question so whenever you run the workflows all your workflows in run in the client all workflows will run in the client this is my client so workflow underscore local underscore 800 is my client guys okay so this is the simple container operation i have explained guys maybe if forever uh, purpose and also guys see here you can see the, a lot of things maybe this is background task is it the step is executed by who executed this step system guys see if you want to come here just i started but it is executed by the system where is the user somewhere you will see the user so maybe we'll see later yeah so it's an sap user it started the workflow sap user but the steps is completed by the uh, system only the steps are completed by the system this is a condition this is a container operation guys this is my container operation and maybe we will go back and i will see another step in this workflow okay i will see another step my another step is the my another step is the um, next step is condition step guys I'm going to use the condition step. What exactly the condition? So what I'm going to do is, and I will create an M1 flag, guys. Here I create one flag, okay? So my flag is, uh, uh, if you want to create the container element, so come here, so workflow container, double click to create, and my flag, my some flag, gv underscore flag, okay, okay, okay and uh, okay and it's uh, my car one car one and this is my flag for the addition subtraction multiplication and division okay so okay so 
next what i am going to do is i don't do directly addition so i will create an a condition i will create an a condition maybe multi condition first i will create an a multi condition so my multi condition is step is check operation okay it's my case statement and value if it is in a, a it's an a addition guys this is my addition step i need to perform subtraction if it is s i need to do an a subtraction subtraction okay um, if it is an a m i need to do an a multiplication multiply and if it is d i do that division i do that division okay comparison basis the comparison and also guys i did one mistake the flag i need to select operators import and export both the things i need to give and the comparison and based on what and based on what field you check this you check these values my comparison value is gv underscore flag so i will pass the value flag equal to a that means i need to do an addition if i pass yes i need to do any subtraction if it is an am i need to do any multiplication if it is an d i need to do any division guys see guys see guys see guys it's very interesting guys i have an a condition see it goes align the things uh, like this it goes maybe guys if you want to highlight this and very very important here you see an a green box reduce it it will zoom guys okay reduce it it zooms see i dragged and drop here see this is my subtraction step this is multiply step this is my division step and this is my addition step guys so maybe i haven't this step this addition whenever it is an addition then only do the addition so i can cut the block and come in the addition i paste the block see when the flag equal to addition do the sum and go here when the flag equal to multiply and create the container operation create the container operation do the uh, do uh, mul multiplication and two numbers multiplied and step should be in the this and a gv underscore result equal to the gv underscore num1 huh? yeah we'll we'll do it we'll do it no problem multiply and gv underscore num2 see guys i'm doing a multiplication over here when when i am doing and and next one is subtraction and create container operation and step name is do what is this here uh, subtraction what is this subtraction multiplication then subtraction do subtraction two numbers are subtracted from each other okay and the result element gv underscore result and expression gv underscore num1 and subtract and gv underscore num2 gv underscore num2 okay that's it and maybe last one so this is a very important guys if you wherever you go it will be highlighted like this okay so now i see the division so create container operation and do uh, div division of two numbers and result num1 divide num2 and okay and save and activate guys see so now i am going to start the workflow
so first so what operation you want to do see guys here i need a flag because my flag will be changed every time so that's why i didn't hard code it in the workflow level so let's assume it's an input to your program okay maybe do you would like to do division i pass that division d and execute the workflow and maybe directly i can go from here also workflow workflow log guys see so workflow log see guys so do division step is executed and if you want to see the values see the values and 6 and 9 and 6 by 9 is the one it's rounding of the value that's the behavior we have seen in the program and it is rounding of the value guys and and also guys and also guys if you want to see the the flow of the execution of the workflow the graphical flow see guys graphical flow of the execution you see guys so workflow ensures right work within the right time within the right sequence guys this is the sequence see if it is an add it is going in the add path if it is an a do some it will go in the do path if it is in a, a subtraction it goes in the subtraction path if it is in a multiplication it will execute in the multiplication path so that's what workflow ensures the right sequence case right sequence will be achieved in the workflow level even the right time i will talk later so see get the right work the right work it ensures the right work if it is in a a it does the addition that is in a right work if it is in a uh, d it does the division it's in a uh, division it's in a right work guys the right work will be done it ensures the right work with the within the right sequence and maybe i will talk about the right time and right person as well in the next concepts oh, don't think i am just giving the basic over here so it ensures the right work will be sent to the right sequence that's what we have achieved and also you see the execution of the flow, uh, flow guys maybe in the program if you want to see the execution flow what you need to do what you need to do after executing the program can you see the execution flow in the <coughs> in the program level no you cannot see when you do debug it then only you can see the execution flow but workflow provides the monitoring what exactly the execution path so the monitoring point of view it's very very good guys so it provides total monitoring for me who executed what and what is the execution path what is the conditions met everything it is going to give in a monitoring guys so total stats it is going to provide the, the automation it is going to give it to me with the right tracking with the right monitoring as well even if there is an errors i can reprocess as well guys that's the name beauty of the workflow suppose there is a problem in the system and the problem it is stopped here itself and if you want to continue your program from here i can do by using workflow reprocess but if it is in a program no guys it goes for the dump guys so there are a lot of advantages with the workflow so in the, this is an even old concept guys because of the technical difficulties technology lack of technology resources most of the people doesn't implement the workflows but i always like to implement the workflows whenever the automation comes i like to implement the workflows guys but most of the people doesn't know abapers if you take the stacks stack, stats 100 people if you see 100 so maybe five people knows the workflow the 95 people doesn't know the workflows guys that's the stats i have seen in the current market so this is my basic example to make you understand the workflow some basic fundamentals what is container element what is workflow container what is the container element how can you assign the values how can you put any conditions so just i have given a brief overview so you try from your end and observe all the things then you will understand the next concept space why because i don't want to give more dose over here itself so yesterday is some more dose but again i started from the very uh, basic level so like program how we came from the zero in the workflow also i came from the zero to make you the uh, to make you understand the concepts that's it for today's class i have some work okay you can try you can you can first of all you need to you need to know about the screen navigation case that's very very important task here okay screen navigations are very important in the workflows and also you should understand the architecture and as well as these containers and the the flow of the data with the binding this is also very very important binding containers architecture and object orientation that's enough for me for the workflows so we can design right workflows
very complicated workflows and i have designed al almost a kind of google map kind of uh, process total order to cash process i have designed one of the client okay not only cash even to the revenue recognition i have automated the business process with all approval steps background steps all kind of reprocess steps and all validation steps everything we have achieved maybe we'll try to maybe we may not do that kind of that much maybe i can give uh, maximum five to six steps in the workflow guys okay maybe we have discussed that that step that workflow we will talk in the project okay the codes comes from the postman and we will see until the invoice creation how we can automate the business process that kind of project we are going to do with a combination of uh, babi and uh, interfaces and also idoc with the workflow i will combine all together all the four concepts obviously normal concepts also will be covered data dictionary will be covered and also you can take a report just i triggered 100 workflows i need the user want to see the report the 100 workflows where exactly the status of that the quotes i need to status you can i can, I can develop an interactive report by using alv whoops as well guys so we can do but your efforts is important from your side guys okay so that's the thing guys i think i hope you enjoyed the class we'll see see you tomorrow bye bye any questions yeah Huh? Two? I. Uh, okay, okay, okay. I understand it. Yes, the parallel processing is possible. Yeah, I will come to that part. Okay, so that's I call it's a parallel processing, is the technical term. So here, every it is executing only in the single path. But I would like to do parallelly some task in this path. And I need to do some task in this path. Parallelly, it should execute, right? So yeah, I will. I will have that scenario. I will come up with whenever the fourth step comes. That time I will. I am going to explain that parallel processing as well. I, I call that in a parallel processing guys. Okay. So we'll see that kind of things. Very very important. So everything guys. See these two buttons are very important. This button and this button and this button. Okay. And also this also steps. What is the see guys? First step is assign the value. Second step is assign to the num2. And the third step is checking the operation with addition, multiplication or not. And fourth step is the do division, guys. That's the flow of the execution. You see, the clearly it shows what is the flow of your workflow. And also, if you want to see total flow, you can see with us started the workflow, num1 assigned, num2 assigned, and checking operation. It's in a division. It goes to the division path. It did, it did the operation of the division, guys. That's the beauty of the workflow, guys. Thanks. See you. Bye-bye tomorrow.